it's been um, it's been a great week. So we've come to worship our God, and I want to welcome Rosie and Derek, uh, who are our link missionaries. It's wonderful uh, to have you here this morning, and I'd like to start first of all with the call to country. <clears throat> I would like to acknowledge that we are here today on the land of its traditional owners, the Bunurong people, part of the Kulin Nation. We wish to acknowledge that they are made in the image of our Creator God, and I pay respect to their elders past and present. And we look together for a shared future where through Christ all things will be reconciled. And let's pray together. Blessed are you, O God, full of faithfulness and steadfast love. How awesome are your deeds. How glorious is your name in all the earth. We celebrate who you are and what you have done for us. You hold our lives in your hands and keep our feet from stumbling. We come together, led by your Holy Spirit, to sing your praise to confess our failings, and to receive your forgiveness and love, made possible through the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. To you be all glory, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Well, would you like to stand together as we sing about what Christ has done for us on the cross. There is a redeemer. Oh, we've got two. Oh, we've got a couple of kids here. 
you welcome to come forward or otherwise. Um, over you, Rosie. Hello everybody. Um, we've got a slide. Um, next one, thanks, Jackie. Of a painting that was done by a woman called Karina, and she's a desert woman. And today I want to talk about light because there's a lot of light in that picture. You can probably see up the top there's a star. It's actually a very Western star. It's not an average, how an Aboriginal person would do a star, but that light is shining down and you can see there's that like an upside down cup which represents the stable where Jesus was born. And then right in the middle there you can see a little um, shape like that, which is actually a cooler mop. So Jesus would have been resting in this little bark dish, he would have been resting in that. And then on either side, you can see symbols, those little um, U shapes, they're people. Um, so that would be Mary and Joseph on each side of the Kulamon. And then around in a semicircle there, you've got three shapes of three people. And if you look carefully, there's a stick beside it, which would represent a spear. But also, there are little gifts at the front of those three people as they uh, worship Jesus. So I wonder who they are, those three people. They, the wise men are represented there and they've got their little gifts. And then at the back of that you've got a whole lot of shepherds, again with their spears, um, worshipping Jesus around that stable. So um, in John's Gospel, in chapter 1 4 we hear that in him Jesus was life and that light was the light of all humankind and in the Christmas story there is so much light isn't there you've got the light of that star we've got in that picture and then you've got the light with all the angels that appear to the shepherds in the fields and of course you have various angels appearing to Mary and um, to other people so the light is represented as coming into the darkness and the darkness is not put out. And I think that is what that painting is showing there. Last year in Darwin, we were visiting a place where Aboriginal people come in to stay before they get more permanent housing. And the people come from all different places over the territory, over the territory and they speak many different languages. And Derek and I were visiting these people and leading up to Christmas, we were saying, oh, what would you like to do? Um, and they said, oh, we must have a celebration. We've got to have a Christmas celebration. So we advertised the idea of a worship celebration um, at, at the site in a community hall there. And uh, we said to the children, come along, we'll have a practice of the nativity story. Well, that was a bit of a disaster because two weeks before we turned up, we advertised it with the families. And I think there were about two children that turned up that lasted for five minutes and ran off. So we thought, this is not going to work. What are we going to do? We'll turn up on the day and nobody will be there. <laughs> so anyway, we came to the special day and we prayed a lot about this. And on the morning before, I ran this women's group where we did cooking and sewing and other things. So we decided we'd bake up some biscuits. And some of the children were around, so they came and they helped, helped to decorate these biscuits. And it was a really happy time. And I realised that most of the children didn't know the Christmas story at all. Um, although some of the adults did from their um, mission exposure in the remote areas. Anyway, I turned up about 3 o'clock in the afternoon and it was pouring with rain because of the wet season. I thought, oh, nobody will turn up. It's so wet. But there were a whole lot of excited children waiting outside the centre to get dressed up for the play. And some of the women also came to help. And in the end, we had over 30 people who came to hear that Christmas story. And the children, we dressed them up and they acted in the play and they were really excited to have the food afterwards. 
and some of the women we had prepared to come and sing Christmas carols or Christmas songs in their own languages. And um, the tradition is when you sing the songs, you do actions, we call them action songs. So the women did that in various languages. And everybody felt really happy and encouraged. And one Christian woman came up to us afterwards and said, thank you for keeping the hope alive. They had a terrible week the week before, some of these women. It often happens just before Christmas. And, and this was just a sign for them, that light that was coming to them. And she pointed up to heaven when she said this, thank you for keeping the hope alive. And we saw that it was true for the reading today where it says that the God of light who shone that light into the darkness long ago had brought the light of Jesus to us at that place where we met at that time, even in the rain. Can we just have some of the photos of that, Jackie? Uh, keep going. That was the nativity time. And then the next one was the women doing their action songs. So Jesus was making his life, light shine inside all of us and the Aboriginal people were part of that and they were leading it and he wants us to continue too to worship him just like those wise men did long ago and as the Aboriginal people did at that point. For the God who said let light shine out of the darkness made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of, the, of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. So let us pray. God of light, you made us and you love us. We thank you for Jesus, the light of the world, who can shine in people's hearts and lives everywhere. Lord, help us to keep on shining your light to other people do not know you yet, and help us never to be afraid of the darkness. Amen. So I invite Robin up now to read from God's word to us from Second uh, Corinthians. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds, has blinded the minds of the unbelievers, to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away. Our inner nature is being renewed day by day. This is the word of the Lord. So I'd like to invite Rosie and Derek up, and we're going to have a little bit of an uh, interview with them. So, so Derek and Rosie have had uh, a varied uh, ministry over the years and they uh, in well, the last church that they were in was All Saints in Clayton and while they were there 
and I was in Rosie, we were in a, a prayer retreat group together, and Rosie was saying, I think God's telling us to, uh, to veer in a different direction. And uh, so we were praying with her, and obviously they were praying together, and God called them uh, to mission work up the middle of the territory. So they, when they had finished at All Saints, they, uh, they had about six months at St. Andrew's Hall, which is in Byrindic and Parkville, learning all about cross-cultural ministry, which uh, they'd already uh, had learned a lot because of their time in, the, uh, in Carlton. And then in 2018, they were living here and coming here when they could, which we really appreciated. Uh, but they were also going around all the different churches, uh, speaking about what, they, what God was calling them to uh, before they went to the Merrick Northern Territory. Now, Derek, tell us, how did you get to know Aboriginal people in the Northern Territory? Hello, it's great to be here. It's uh, great to, be, to welcome you. Thank you very much. The slide says, home church, yay. It's back at all the churches we've been to. It's good to be back home. So in the middle of 2018, we uh, went to Northern Territory in partnership with the Anglican Diocese up there and uh, be part of a mission development team which was encouraging the growth of all the Aboriginal churches across the Territory. And uh, for the first three and a half months, we, uh, next one, thank you, we stayed at, uh, if you press the little arrow at the side, at Inkor, just on the kink in the gulf of the Territory there. Uh, and um, there we were, uh, Making friends, if you just cycle through some thank you, and, and the next one um, to make friends, to learn language, uh, Creole language in the community, to learn more about Aboriginal people and being part of the church there, and to encourage them uh, in small ways where we could. Then, in the middle of 2000, uh, end of 2018, we went to Darwin, uh, which is the cliff again. Up there, about eight and a half, nine hours to the northwest. And um, in Darwin, uh, Rosemary will share about the things we were doing. Um, so we needed to get to know people in Darwin, and we went firstly to the hospitals. Um, there's one main hospital, Royal Darwin Hospital, and some aged care places as volunteer chaplains. Um, and we took with us an Aboriginal colleague, um, and uh, she had the language, and she taught us a lot. Uh, and then we also visited hostels and rehab services, and visited people to get to know them in their homes around um, where we lived. And also, I go to the jail once a month for a service, and Derek is um, a part-time chaplain at the Department of Fisheries there. Once a fortnight, he goes there. Hmm. Also, um, as we got to know people, we made our house a place of hospitality to friends and neighbours and people that came from the remote community that we knew. So we um, sit out at the back um, on our veranda and have food, and some people would stay over. Some also came to study at Nunda Vineyard College, which is an inter interdenominational. Christian College in Darwin um, to learn to grow and um, <coughs> minister, learn for ministry and leadership. And I think there's a photo there of James and Miriam that we have supported. They, he's particularly a, um, an assistant teacher there at Northern Vineyard College. And we have Bible studies with him and his wife. And Miriam comes with us. She's the colleague that comes to the hospital with us. It's just okay. Now I'll, I'll speak from here. So Derek, now what has been the main focus of your ministry? Well, uh, there's many things we could do and wanted to do, but the main focus has been to firstly to share our lives, to uh, grow in relationships with people and uh, to learn from each other. Uh, there was a photo of some friends 
uh, that we got to know when we first met there and we used to uh, have time with them and, uh, and do things together and have some Bible studies together. Learning about Aboriginal culture, their communities, their language groups, which determine the sort of denominations they come from, mission background, and about their story of faith uh, and church links or mission links. And also to learn how best to coordinate with um, people who are um, also working amongst Aboriginal people, as a shot here, one of our co workers with the children in one of the communities that we spend time with. A lot of people who are from other churches and mission groups are working amongst the people we, we meet, so we need to work together. And out of these contacts, uh, to focus uh, on finding Aboriginal people who are open to share with us, to find out about what it means to follow Jesus, and those keen to grow in faith and to learn about ministry together, and uh, some who would want to grow into leadership. Uh, how to understand and apply the Bible in their lives, and how they might help others to do that too. And we found that wherever we went, the need was great, but the workers are few. So we kind of, the penny started to drop as to why God had sent us there, that there was a lot of opportunities to do that. So we also um, run a, a Bible and Life group at a rehab centre. Thanks. Thank you. There's a shelf back there. Uh, every week. And they're incredibly open. People who have been through some really tough times, really hungry to learn about God and pray for Him to change their lives. And I also, uh, in these photos, a group of men in one of the main Aboriginal communities uh, where we ran a, uh, I had a Bible study going for these guys. Uh, a lot of the leaders in the territory are women in the remote churches and in town, so it was really, it's really encouraging to have some men who want that's what we're praying for as well. And from all these places, we would gather uh, people to join us uh, at the local little church that we go to up there, St. James Sanderson. It's a photo of some of the people we gather from various places to join us. A uh, little church of mixed cultures and ages. Okay, and Rose. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you come across? Well, there are many challenges. I'll just mention three of them. Uh, because there are many different Aboriginal cultures and languages at, um, in Darwin, um, it's a very diverse situation. Um, and we believe that ministry grows best in the hands of the Aboriginal believers, in their language and their culture. And a lot of them don't feel comfortable coming to a white coloured church. Um, and they find it hard to even to relate across the language groups as well. And they, they struggle to fit in mainstream churches in Darwin. And there can also be suspicion um, and rivalry uh, between them. So, you know, for us to start Bible study, studies in different language groups was important. Um, there is one slide there, though, of a church we go to at night, an independent church, where mixing does happen, which is greatly encouraging at the Bagot Church. Um, the second uh, challenge, I think, are many pressures needed, uh, pressures and needs that di disrupt Aboriginal families. So if somebody comes up as a leader, um, a, the rest of the family and the community tend to lean on them. And because there's so many needs, there's homelessness, there's alcoholism, there are a whole range of educational needs, that person can be really, become really stressed and needs a lot of support. Um, and I think because of the complex legacy with colonialism, um, that, that, there's a lot of what we call intergenerational trauma that is passed down. Um, and affects the current Aboriginal people. Um, and we found that people were really unconfident and had a lack of a sense of identity, who they really were, that is constantly there in the background. Um, the last, I guess any supportive ministry involves walking alongside them as they cope with those challenges. It's a day-by-day -day thing and it's very complex. 
Um, it is part of living out the good news, isn't it? And for people to experience God's grace in a holistic way. And the la lastly, we are also confronted with the need to look at aspects of our, our own world view. And that can be quite confronting, looking at values in a fresh way, particularly around ownership of property um, and how and the, the, the rich attitude people have towards family and kinship. So we found we were rereading scripture in a new way, and particularly the Creole Bible we're reading in Creole, which also helped us to understand more clearly what was going on. Okay, now, dear, what do you hope to do when you now, first of all, you are returning in August up to the Northern Territory. Um, we're assuming CMS are going to keep, yeah, they're going to send you back. So what do you hope to do when you return? Well, uh, God willing, if we don't fall to bits between now and then, um, we'll be going, hopefully, for three years uh, another term. Uh, to grow deeper in these relationships with people that we've met, to mentor and support a few leaders, uh, and uh, that they would then be able to serve uh, in their own language, in their own groups, and encourage uh, raising up others amongst their own people. If it all depends on things that we do, and we go, it all stops. But if, if we can encourage, well, we're learning from each other, but to be there to encourage ministry amongst the Aboriginal uh, with their own hopes, that's much uh, more valuable in the long term. Um, and to develop teams with uh, both Aboriginal people and non-Aboriginal people uh, to work together and discern God's way together. Uh, this uh, one of the images, a lot of talk about the gap, you know, the gap between mainstream culture and Indigenous culture. And, and to be meeting in the middle, and I sometimes think about it, that dancing in the gap, that we actually share our lives where both of us don't feel really at home, but we're meeting in the middle to, to learn together what God's saying and to be sojourners together as brothers and sisters. So to make this possible, CMS likes to challenge supporting link churches like here at Long Beach to pray, care, give, or go. Pray, care, give, go. And when we go, we know that you will continue to pray and to care and to give for us for that to be possible. And for the boys, uh, David and Prue, who we live next door to at the moment, till they go uh, next Thursday back to Congo, and Ash and Sue, and as you do that for each other, uh, as you go in mission here in Long Beach and beyond. So thank you for, for all of that. We couldn't be there without you, and it meant so much for us um, to be part of this family, of your partnership, and doing it together. And uh, see us afterwards if you'd like to get on the email list for our newsletter, which we send out normally about once a month, and um, or, and perhaps uh, like some support us financially as the church does collectively. Uh, we've got prayer cards up the back, um, which you can stick on your fridge if you want to, or your dartboard, or whatever you want. And, um, and, uh, and there's little um, uh, bookmarks with the faces of the Anglican Aboriginal leaders across the Territory. So, and they're all friends of ours. Um, you can pray, pray for them. Uh, there should be some bookmarks there for you. Many of you are already going out in mission uh, here, across the street, or across the suburbs, um, and God may be even calling you uh, on top of that, or uh, apart from those people, to go in mission in new ways, both here, in your community, or beyond. We need to be open always to the fresh calling of the Spirit, don't we? Uh, and what his purpose is for this world and lives. So we'll keep on praying for you. Your mission here is just as important as whatever we're involved in. So we're praying for you and really interested in your story of mission here. And uh, here, as well as in the territory, the need is great and the work is of you. So now, 
we're going into the next part, which is looking at a passage of scripture and um, sharing some reflections on that. Um, we heard the reading today from 2 Corinthians 4. And as we were preparing uh, with that reading, I have a question that came to mind. And some people have asked this question, not necessarily Christian people, but others have said, why um, is God, uh, where is God in the suffering of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, you know? What's he doing? There's so much trouble. Has God abandoned them? It's a very hard question, isn't it, to ask, I think. Um, because, and, and the reason I think that's asked because there's so many troubling issues in their story. And we might ask that of ourselves today. We've had just so much trouble with the um, COVID and the suffering that we've seen in our society. Um, how do we understand the ways God might be at work in the trouble in all of this? And I think this scripture we heard actually addresses some of that question. And um, the, the first image in that passage we read in 2 Corinthians 4 is light and darkness. And in verse 6 it says, For it is the God who said that light shine out of darkness who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So that God who created light in the beginning is also doing his work to recreate and transform people inside through history and today. It's his work for people to come to know and serve him. He does that. Many of the leaders that we have met have had a really troubled past. There's been alcoholism, violence, some have gone to jail. But God has actually rescued them from that darkness into his light and has been moulding him by his moulding them by his spirit. And they do stand out like beacons in the communities that we visited. Despite the many challenges and family pressures, they stand out. And Derek has an example. One of the encouragements has been uh, uh, Marjorie and William, our skin relatives, brother and sister from the community of Moorbord, where we lived. That's them. Um, that was out to the original spot where the first missionaries arrived 113 years earlier, um, and singing uh, Jesus Loves Me as they sang on that day. Uh, they are deacons leading the uh, St Matthew's Anglican Church there. And they, they, they tell us of various problems they had in the past and um, how God has changed them and um, called them and given them this light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Uh, Marjorie has had recurrent health problems. They have family struggles. We've been to their place and you know, we've seen the comings and goings. But they still keep going on. And... Um, They've also been serving uh, in the Creole Bible Translation team for about 30 years. That's, uh, uh, you can hardly see, it. that's William on the, on the left, about to receive his copy of the Catholic Convention a few years ago, of the second edition. So these people have been serving Catholic all, that, all those years and currently studying and developing language uh, Bible resources for Mongolian College. We're doing a translation uh, diploma and uh, also involved in oral uh, Bible recordings in Creole with the OZL, that's the Wycliffe Bible Translation, work amongst Indigenous languages. Uh, and um, this is a sign of the work of the Spirit that we celebrate at Pentecost of, of Jesus reaching, the message of Jesus reaching people of all languages um, in the uh, many hundreds of indigenous languages in our land, and their photos are on the book now. Um, we've seen such transformation in the lives of others too. And you and we, we've experienced that too, haven't we, in our lives. And mostly God, I think, works in unexpected ways through us as ordinary, vulnerable people. And so that's where the second image comes into play in that passage today. 
the image of the clay jars, but we have this treasure in clay jars to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. So the example of these Aboriginal people has inspired us to think again about what it means to have that treasure in clay jars. So let's think about those, those jars. Clay jars are quite ordinary, aren't they? But they know that ordinariness um, has a special purpose. It would be carrying oil or something that was important. Um, and the focus would not have been on the jar so much, but what it was carrying. And for us, that means the focus, as for us as clay jars, is not on ourselves, but on Jesus and his word. He is the true treasure inside. Secondly, I think um, clay jars represent humility. So we can be servants who trust in what God does. We don't trust in our own strength. Uh, we, we trust that he is at work and that we are weak, really. And lastly, clay jars can break. They're vulnerable. They can be broken. And we are mortal. We know that. We've experienced that, haven't we, through COVID, how mortal we are. We've met some Aboriginal folk who've been broken in different ways. But the treasure uh, that's inside of them, their faith, keeps going. They're resilient. And there's light shining through those cracks. I'd like to give an example of one person um, who I think is a clay jar. Um, we met her at the drug rehab centre we were attending each week. She was out of jail. She was an um, alcoholic. Her three children had been removed and she was spending three months in the rehab last year. And she came to our Bible study there and she asked for help straight away. She wanted to pray a sorry prayer and she did that with tears. She was just desperate for hope and wanting to get her children back. And yet we saw beauty emerge out of this brokenness. She took a Bible. She started coming to church on Sundays with us. Um, and then she successfully completed the course and went back to Catherine. She has not gone back to the alcohol, but it was a struggle. The three children were brought back through family services. But what happened is one day, um, this year, a little boy went to the back bedroom and lit a match and the, bed the bed back bedroom started to burn. And she lost good she'd saved for over that time. Things like the aircon and fridge and so on. And she rang us um, while we were down here. She was just desperate. She said, please pray for me. I have no one else to talk to. And you would want me to stay strong. I know I can't go back to what it was like before. And I'm telling you that I just have to keep going. She's like one of those clay jars, faithful and persevering. The image on that big photo of the Exodus painting by one of the uh, residents at the uh, rehab centre Ed, was uh, after he read, after coming out of jail, read the Exodus story, painted it for two hours, and uh, and then later painted Aboriginal people walking across the, between the parted waters to the promised land in terms of leaving what's behind to the new life God gives his people through powerful ministry that God is sharing with us. This is encouraging and challenging for us, isn't it? Uh, and for us, this image of the clay jars for the Aboriginal people and the Aboriginal churches, but also for ourselves as we serve God uh, we are older now, both of us have got our health problems uh, and uh, Rosemary and I found we also can't um, depend on our own plans and organising our things. Aboriginal people often don't plan uh, but live often in the moment just because of the crisis and the big challenges around them. When God keeps on humbling us, we need to trust him in new ways every day, just for basic things. Um, where we should go, who we should meet. But we, as we step out, not knowing what's going to happen next time, 
We keep on discovering signs of God's Spirit at work in surprising and amazing ways, seemingly in what seems like just chance encounters that we couldn't possibly have organised but opened the door to amazing things. And we just needed to keep on being available, just to sit and listen to people and to see God at work. We came to realise that you must have been praying along with others from our in churches. So we're so grateful for that. And and praise God for the you know that He does, as Paul said, give us the good works He's prepared for us to walk in by faith. It's not our own doing, it's His gift. So we have much to learn uh, also in language, our Creole is just pretty ordinary. And uh, in culture there's a lot we don't understand. But God can use us as ordinary old crackpots like Rosemary and I, and like you, Bob. But, but uh, we don't wait to reward shiny and new and clever until God can use us that, as we are in our brokenness. And it really helps us to connect. I think COVID is a wonderful opportunity for us to understand what a lot of people, like the Indigenous people, refugees, or the people in minority groups, uh, like all the time, who have their plans changed, they can't not free to go and do what they'd like to do, haven't got the resources, can't travel and do things, have things taken away from them that we're going through now, we can really understand each other a bit better. In this passage, um, or further, I think it's further on in the passage, Paul had his thorn in his flesh to remind him of God's strength in his weakness. And COVID, as we've said, has reminded us all about our weakness, that we're not in control. However, rather than general suffering in this passage, I think Paul is addressing the suffering that belongs specifically to Christians serving in the gospel. Um, and it says, uh, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned struck down but not destroyed we always carry around in our body the death of jesus so that the life of jesus may be also revealed in our body and uh, in verse 16 that we heard read this morning too which really sums it all up for paul he says therefore we do not lose heart though outwardly we are wasting away yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day so um, we want to give an example of somebody who has had that specific persecution for following Jesus. A friend of ours, uh, Jay, who's on the screen, <coughs> sitting on the floor with a little child at the uh, little church community in one of the main communities we visit in town. Uh, he was cast out of his community in North East Island land because he refused to follow in his own father's footsteps as a ceremonial leader. He'd become a Christian and believed God had other things for him to do, that this wasn't a priority. His only son was uh, kept behind by the community because they were so angry that he didn't fulfil their expectations. Mysteriously, after Jay left the community, leaving his son behind, the son mysteriously died. He believes he lost his only son because he refused the inheritance that the community was putting on him because he was now a Christian. He now leads that little vulnerable church uh, in town uh, that we uh, and we support him uh, each week as we join in. To make Jesus known inevitably means to share in his death the way of the cross that others might uh, find life in him. And I guess many of you involved in God's work here and uh, down in Karen and uh, in the various programs you have understand what the cost of that means sometimes. This is the, the light, the Easter hope and the Pentecost hope that we celebrate each Sunday. You and we along with the Aboriginal Christians um, and the Christians in the not only Northern Territory, but also in the early church, are called to be jars bearing this light and treasure to others.
So the original question which I asked at the beginning, where is God in the suffering amongst Aboriginal people? Has God abandoned them? Well, from I hope from what you've heard this morning, it's definitely no. Let us have our eyes open to the power of grace through the good news, that powerful hope of this treasure for his chosen ones, at work by his spirit through their vulnerable lives. And let's pray that Aboriginal churches, um, along with all of us here, will be faithful jars of clay, walking together, walking together in hope, encouraging each other to persevere through our struggles and holding on to our hope in Jesus. He is the true light and treasure. And I'd like to finish with a prayer. Uh, this is written by an Aboriginal friend of ours who lives at Moorport. Um, and she wrote this up on Facebook and I've got permission from her to use it. Heavenly Father, we ask for Holy Spirit. Let's pray it all together. Heavenly Father, we ask for Holy Spirit to be with us in this wonderful day that you gave us. Guide our hearts, mind and soul and give us courage to be strong in our faith. We ask for your authority to do your will in serving you amongst our people with love. Help us to be patient and to accept the trouble we experience in our lives. Daddy God, remove negative thoughts and give us inner strength to cry out for you. Because you know everything about us. We were created in your image. We seek your kingdom that you come and intervene in our situation, Lord. Father, please take our pain, struggle, hardship and sickness in your hands and deliver us from evil, for we trust in you, our God. Amen. Because we'd like to pray for you, and I wonder if Chris and Jacqueline and Di and Wayne, or our woman, would like to come up and just lay hands on you, and I'll pray for you. So, <coughs> and certainly um, amazing listening to those stories, and there are many, <coughs> many more. So, um, even if you maybe not touch, but just put your hand. That'd be great. So let's, uh, let's pray. <coughs> oh Lord, we thank you for Derek and Rosie who listened to your call uh, to come with faith in you first and to serve you and now to go to the Northern Territory. Lord, there is just so many amazing stories of them seeing you at work in, in and through many of the people who they come into contact with. Well, thank you for the relationships that they've de developed. Thank you for the gifts that they are able to use. And so, Lord, we just pray your blessing on them now. Lord, they, their heart's desire is to continue to serve you up in the Northern Territory. And so we pray, especially for Rosie's um, uh, hip and her leg and back. And, Lord, we just pray that you will bring healing uh, your healing hand will just come and touch all of those areas that are out of place and Lord that you will uh, restore those to uh, to how they you originally created them to be and Lord we pray for Derek too and with some of his health uh, issues too and Lord we just pray again that you will uh, watch over them both and Lord as they finish their time down here in Melbourne continuing to visit other churches Lord we pray that you will just use them to share uh, the, the message of what they are doing up in the Northern Territory so we can pray more meaningfully, but also uh, that, Lord, many will think about hearing your voice to actually going themselves to minister, not just up in the Northern Territory, but around the world as well. So, Lord, we pray for uh, the many leaders uh, in the Aboriginal who are just incredible within just all that they go through and all that suffering that many of them are, are undergoing at this time. And so we pray that you will sustain them and that you will continue to use them and develop the gifts that you have given them. 
And also, we ask that you will be with Rosie and Jerry as they work with them. Lord, may they become a really great team and uh, that many will come to know you as their Lord and Saviour and that you will be glorified through all of their ministry. So we pray all of these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for coming and sharing. Well, would you like to stand as we sing together how good our God is? And we certainly have heard that through the ministry of uh, Derek and Rose. <laughs>
season, we continue in prayer as we give thanks for all the things that have been given, the money that's uh, uh, been donated online or put into the plate at the back or will be put in the plate at the back, for all the things that have been donated to the op shop, donated to pantry, donated to Matt's place as well. Uh, let's pray a blessing on them and thanks to God for those. So let's pray. Oh Lord, we thank you that you are the provider of them. You are Jehovah Jireh. So Lord, we thank you for all the different items that have been given and the money that has been given as well. That is just part of uh, the blessing that you have given to us and to others. And so Lord, we pray your blessing on all of the items that as they go into homes or as um, we use it for ministry, Lord, we pray that you will bless all that we do here as a church. And Lord, that many will come to know you and many uh, will just realise that you are the true God. And Lord, that um, you will be glorified through all of the use of this money. So we pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. It's good to set our hearts right with God. And so let's pray this prayer of confession together. Knowing the goodness of God and our failure to respond with love and obedience, let us confess our sins, saying together, Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have broken your holy laws and have left undone what we ought to have done. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And God, who is slow to anger and full of compassion, forgiving all who humbly repent and trust in his Son as Saviour and Lord, while therefore forgives you in Christ Jesus, to whom there is no condemn in whom there is no condemnation. Amen. And now we're going to pray for our church and our world. Thanks for listening. As people living on this earth God created, let us not be downhearted by all the restrictions we have been enduring for the past 18 months or so. But let us be living examples of people shining with the light of Jesus Christ, who lives in us and who will remain in us. So let us not despair or be crushed, but let Jesus carry us through these times. Let us pray. Father God, we continue to pray for the countries throughout the world who are still suffering the severe effects of COVID, in particular Indonesia, where the numbers are growing daily. We thank you that Australia has been generally, has had generally low numbers, and we know we are blessed to be living in this land. We pray for people who are afraid to be vaccinated because they fear any side effects. We know from past experiences that vaccine is the only way to move forward to help control the spread of disease. So please remove any fear and doubt from people and let the vaccine roll out move forward. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for all those people in the area of the Mount Dandenong and the Dandenongs generally have been so, so affected by that horrendous storm last week. The place is a real place of carnage at the moment. Father God, we thank you for the help that is done with me. We thank you for the many volunteers and our emergency services. We are such a blessed country to have these available. Father God, we pray that power can be restored quickly to those people who are still without. And we pray, Father, that these people can once again pick up their lives and start to rebuild. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for Jerusalem at this time as the Israel Gaza conflict is again rising. We pray for the new leader. Give him and his government wisdom and the people confidence in his leadership that this land can see peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our governments, both federal and state. We pray for good trade sanctions to be agreed upon and for good leadership. We pray for Daniel Andrews as he prepares to return to work and thank you for the interim leadership during his absence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you for missionaries everywhere. We particularly hold up to the boys as they prepare to return to the Congo. Give them good health and keep them safe. We pray for Ash and Sue Good as they work in Australia. Enable them to return to PNG in due course. We thank you that today we have Derek and Rosie with us, who are such a blessing. Father, thank you that they acknowledge your call on their lives and the work they are carrying out with our Indigenous community in the Top End. Thank you for the friendships they have made and for the people they have brought to you. Continue to bless them and keep them in good health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, we bring before you the destitute, sick, lonely and aged in our community and all who have no one to care for them. Heal those who are broken in body or spirit and turn their sorrow into joy. Help us to continue to minister their needs through Matt's Place, Pantry 5000, the op shop and winter warmers. We thank you for the coordinators of these outreach programs and ask that you keep them all safe and healthy, particularly through these cold winter months. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have been named in our pew sheets, or on our prayer chain, or on our prayer list. We pray for healing upon them whether it be in body, mind, or spirit. Any of you now might quietly like to name people that you know that need God's particular hand on them at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we're confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to Christ. Loving God, we thank you for this world of wonder and delight. You have given it to us to care for, so that all your creatures may enjoy its bounty. Lord our God, we give you thanks to Christ. We thank you that when we turned away from you, you sent Jesus to live and work as one of us and bring us back to you. He showed us how to love you, set us free to love and serve one another. Lord our God, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you that on the cross, Jesus took away all our sin, all that keeps us from each other and from you. He frees us from hate and fear, from all that destroys love and Lord our God, we give you thanks and praise. And so with everyone who believes in you, with all the saints and angels, we rejoice and praise you, Saint. 
we receive them as Jesus' share the body and the soul. And the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. And he broke the bread and gave it to his friend and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. And he shared the cup with them and said, This is my blood poured out so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. When you have gathered us together to feed on Christ and to remember all he has done for us, fill us with your spirit that we may follow Jesus in all we do and say, working for justice and bringing your peace to the world that you have made. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever.
reveal you to us as you come, may the power of your love, which we have known and heard and sacrificed, continue your saving work in us, give us courage for our privilege, and bring us to the joys of your promise. Together, Father, we offer ourselves to you in the sacrifice, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out the power of your spirit to live and live to your praise and glory. Now, just a few things. Um, after the service, um, we're going to stay in here if you would like to, and we'll bring our lovely people who are doing morning tea. are going to bring around a cup of tea and a cake or a biscuit, and then you have the opportunity uh, to ask the really hard questions of Rosie and Jerry. So anything theological that is really difficult, uh, um, Derek said he'd love to answer, isn't that right? No, <laughs> seriously. Um, just any questions about their ministry. Now, you don't have to stay for this, but if you would like to, uh, then certainly please uh, stay afterwards as well. And then there's just a few things uh, in the newsletter. Today, uh, just an update on the op shop. Today we're going to have our first working group meeting. There's six of us, uh, seven of us I think, who are meeting just looking at ways forward uh, for the op shop. So please pray for us uh, this afternoon. So that will be uh, after this as well. And also uh, we are going to, well we're not sure whether we can, depending on restrictions and that's why we haven't sort of let uh, people know just yet, but we are planning on having a meeting with the volunteers from the op shop, uh, with the, all of the parish council as well on Saturday, but that will depend on whether we can have numbers in here. At the moment we can only have 10 for a meeting, so we are hoping that those restrictions will ease and we'll be able to have that as well. So um, just a couple of other things to uh, note, uh, anyway, they're, they're in here, but also just, it is, it was Sue Gooding's birthday yesterday, and uh, we didn't get to sing her happy birthday yesterday, uh, or last Sunday, so we will sing happy birthday, and her husband will play the guitar so nicely for this, and it was also Fiona Oates' birthday as well, so if you remember Ian and Fiona, who were here, it was Fiona's birthday too. So is it anyone else's birthday? Babe? It's my Carol's birthday. And Carol's birthday. so she can hear us. Hear us, okay. Are that permitted? Yep. Am I allowed? Yes, that's mine. So Carol as well. And is there anyone else's anniversary or birthday? No? Okay. So we are going to be singing to Sue, Fiona, and Carol. So are you ready, Faye? Hold on, hold on, I'm not quite ready. <laughs> she just trying to get Carol on the phone so she can hear us sing, uh, sing to her. Carol. <laughs> it's all right, she's just started phoning here. Was she expecting this phone call? Was this a surprise? It is live stream, so she can do it. Oh, I'll turn her new sheet. Okay, yeah. Okay, well, we're going to sing happy birthday to Sue, Fiona, and Carol. So here we go. Yeah. 
that we do and all that we say.